Hello everyone, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. In this session, we will be discussing about multithreading in Java. But before we begin, let me tell you guys that we have daily updates on multiple technologies. If you are a tech geek in a continuous hunt for latest technological trends, then consider getting subscribed to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Learn. Now without further ado, let's get started with our agenda for today's discussion. At first, we'll discuss about what exactly is multiprocessing. Then, we will discuss the types of multiprocessing. After that, we will understand what exactly is a thread. Then, we will learn multithreading in Java. Followed by that, we will understand what is the life cycle of a thread in Java. Then, we will execute a simple program based on multithreading in Java. And finally, we will wind up the session by discussing the advantages of multithreading in Java. I hope I made myself clear with the agenda. Now let's get started with our first point. That is, what exactly is multiprocessing? So what is multiprocessing? So multiprocessing is a procedure where you utilize your processor to the maximum. It's basically dividing the instruction you give to your CPU into multiple parts and each segment is assigned a separate thread to execute that particular task. Now moving forward, we will discuss about the types of multiprocessing. So basically, there are two different types of multiprocessing. The first one is process-based multiprocessing and the second one is the thread-based multiprocessing. So our point of discussion is the thread-based multiprocessing. Now we will understand what exactly is a thread. So a thread is an individual lightweight and the smallest unit of a given process. There are multiple threads in a single process and each thread is independent of each other. So basically, whenever you assign an instruction to your processor, it divides the instructions into segments. And all these segments are assigned with a single thread. And the best part of using threads is, in case if one of your threads is not operational or it is dead, then the rest of the threads will not be affected. Your process will not be halted. So that's the major advantage of multithreading. We'll discuss all the advantages in the upcoming parts. Now, after the definition, we will understand a little more about the thread. So basically, threads are interdependent. Sometimes you may have to switch between one process to another process, or you might have to switch between one thread and another thread. So as shown in the above figure, the thread is executed inside the process and there is context switching between the threads. There can be multiple processes inside the operating system and one process can have multiple threads as well. Now moving forward, we will understand more about the thread lifecycle. So basically, a thread lifecycle is decided in five different stages. So the first stage is the new, next is runnable, after that running and followed by running, you either have to wait or you can also send your thread into the dead state based on the requirements of your process. Now we will discuss each one of them in a bit more detail. First, we will discuss about the new stage. The first stage in a thread is always called the new stage. In this stage, the brand new thread is created and is kept on hold. No process is allocated to it or it will not start executing until a process has been assigned to it. After the creation of the new thread, the next stage is the runnable stage. It is where a thread gets assigned to the process and the thread is engaged. It is ready to get executed. The next stage is where the OS or the process scheduler begins the execution of the process using the thread and that stage is called as the running stage. Once the process is running, it can continue in that stage until the process gets finished or sometimes it has to wait because of the response that it needs from another process. That stage is called as waiting and in case if the thread has finished executing the process, it can directly enter into the dead state. Now we will discuss what is waiting stage. So as discussed, the waiting stage is where the current thread is in the wait situation as it needs a response from another thread. There are two ways 
one it might have to wait for the response from the other thread and go into wait or it might finish the execution stage and directly enter into the dead state so the dead state is the last stage where the thread gets killed after the process execution after the termination stage the thread enters into the dead condition now that we have understood a thread and what is its life cycle let us execute a simple program based on multi-threading as you can see on my screen, we have a simple program for multi-threading. Here, my class is multi-thread and we are extending the thread class to create threads into our program. Now, we are going to create three simple threads that are thread A, thread B and thread C. And all those threads will be executing one single message that is printing the thread is operational message onto the print console. Now, let's directly execute this program and see the output. So as you can see, the program got successfully executed and all these three threads are activated and they are executing the job of printing a simple message. Now let us move ahead and discuss the advantages of using multi-threading in Java. So following are the advantages of using multi-threading in Java. They are threads can perform multiple operations at the same instance and this will save a lot of time. Multi-threading offers improved throughput and multi-threading minimizes the system resources and program structure is really simplified and it offers superior application responsiveness and finally it improvises the communications between the different processes in the project now with that we have come to an end of this tutorial on multi-threading in java if you have any queries regarding the topics discussed in this particular tutorial then please feel free to let us know in the comment sections below and our team of experts will be happy to resolve all your queries until next time thank you stay safe and keep learning Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.